Welcome back to Life in Motion and to this rather large, rather long and rather heavy Range Rover Sport P400E. Now my journey to the office is around seven miles each way and the average commuter in the UK is doing around 20 to 30 miles round trip every day. That got me thinking. With the new Range Rover Sport have just been released, this previous generation may now be really rather good value for money. And that's what I want to find out. In this video, I'm going to go around the outside and the inside, look at the technology, find out what it's like to drive, and see if the plug-in hybrid aspect of this car is any good. And also we ask the question, is it good value for money? I hope you all enjoy it. Let's go. So let's start with some numbers. The P400E has a two litre petrol engine producing 297 brake horsepower. It's also got a 13 kilowatt hour battery, which means it goes from naught to 62 in 6.3 seconds. Electric range is 25 to 30 miles, and you'll be seeing combined 88.3 miles per gallon. And if we close this bonnet down, one thing to note is Ranger have been very clever in hiding that this is a hybrid. You plug your cable in right there. It's perfect. It just means that it looks like a normal Range Rover, but you're benefiting from hybrid goodness. But what do you think of the Range Rover? I think it looks rather smart. Big wheels, obviously, being this is a HSC Dynamic. You have lovely big wheels. You've also got these nice LEDs that look very current. I know that the new one is now out. I don't think this is looking outdated at all. I think it looks rather smart. Obviously, it's a big car. It's not small, but it looks really good. Now, fortunately, this Range Rover Sport isn't as drug dealery as I thought it might look. We've got grey, which looks quite classy. We've got privacy glass, so there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, we've got 21 inch wheels, but they're not all blacked out. They've got some silver bits, so I think it looks quite good. And again, you can kind of get the size. I'm about 5'10". Look, it, it is a big car. And this is what I really like about this generation Range Rover. It still looks current. Yes, the new one does look really lovely, but this one still looks very Range Rover very current leds really help that it's a typical stance it looks good i just think it's again thinking value for money this and i'll tell you about pricing in a minute looks good at the back it's got p400e which is nice because eco-friendly polar bear loving cyclists can see that and know that you care about the environment but also if you have got a dog then it's probably quite important to know on the hybrid you lose 79 litres of boot space, but it's okay because you still have 780 litres anyway. Also, a nice touch, there's a little button here that lowers the back of the car so your dog can get in and out easier. And if you're a caravanist, it might be good to know that this car has a reduced towing capacity, being that it's the hybrid. It can only tow 2,500 kilograms, so Probably best to stick to a Honda CRV or something. Right, into the cabin we go. There is something about sitting in a Range Rover that sometimes just can't be beat. Anyway, inside, first of all, good news. We have modern amenities. We've got touch screens and we've got in the middle here, a 10 inch and 10 inch touch screen. This one is the tilting one that displays things like media and navigation. This one at the bottom does things like terrain response, car settings, and also things like air conditioning, heated seats, that sort of thing. In front of me, we have the virtual cockpit, which looks rather good. It's not as good as some other rivals, but it does the job. We've got touch buttons on the steering wheel, which look very smart. They do a nice job. And again, they look rather modern. So we have these lovely perforated leather seats, which feel really nice. And also I like a contrasting color. I don't know, dark exterior, light interior, helped by this lovely sunroof, which is gorgeous. 
But yeah, it feels very lovely. Now, things we do want to note. These touchscreens, although they look great and the virtual screen in front of me, they do love a fingerprint. My words, when I'm touching all these different buttons, all I can see after a while is just my fingerprints just smeared across. Also, there is a big lack of physical buttons. We've got a volume knob, but other than that, we've got kind of, everything does a million different things, which means that when I'm driving, I've kind of got to basically juggle my myself and my the, the lives of my passengers and make sure we don't die. Now, let me welcome you into the back because, oh, if you've got passengers, kids, whatever, they are gonna be the most comfortable person in the back. Honestly, I've got so much leg room. I've got a pretty much flat lip in the middle so people in the middle can actually sit quite comfortably. I've got these little bits in front of me that can store stuff, heated seats, I can charge my phone. It's just really, really nice. The pan sunroof does help, there's lots of light in. The light interior brings it up too. But yeah, it's a lovely driving position. I can see a huge amount out the windows. Here as well, it's, it's just sometimes in cars, the actual door and the window, it's kind of on weird proportions. You can't really see as much as you should do. Whereas in the Range Rover, I can see plenty. Oh, look at this, look at that. There's so much air, I just, oh. Oh, I could just sleep here. I could just sleep here all day. Oh, it's lovely. So now we've looked around the outside and the inside, let's talk some figures. This car when new was around 85,000 pounds. Today with 30-ish thousand miles and a couple of years old is around 55 to 60,000 pounds. The new Range Rover Sport starts from 87 and a half thousand pounds and with options will be north of 100,000 pounds. I'm asking whether this is now good value for money. And yes, where I'm standing, it's very good value for money. So let's just jump in and find out what it's like on the move. Welcome on board the Range Rover Sport. And I've just got to say it, I feel very regal. I feel like I'm better than everyone else. And I think that's pretty much what Range Rover stands for, right? Probably not, it's probably luxurious. But anyway, I do feel very, very bosh. Anyway, welcome inside. And the first thing I want to talk about is the range. So on the dashboard right now, it says that my electric miles has got 28 miles of range, which actually is rather good. As I said, I found some forum on the internet to say that the average commute in the UK is around, what, 20, 30 miles a day round trip. And that seems to be plenty. And it got me thinking, why would you not want to have this car every day? Uh, the owner of this particular car, I've got to say a massive thank you to, but the owner, Ben, he drives this car 15,000 miles a year. And actually, from his perspective, he does what? He fills up every month and a half. So it's basically never compared to, for example, my Cayman, which I fill up every seemingly other day. Now, the other part to not filling up ever is using the electric battery, which means you have to charge it. Now, if you use a three pin socket, then you should charge it about seven and a half hours. Uh, so it's clearly an overnight job. But if you've got a wall socket and you've got a 32 amp cable, then actually it will charge it around three hours. So you could easily just, you know, pop to the shops, whatever it might be, and charge it, plumb it back, and you've got plenty of charge. Now, obviously, if you're doing a longer journey, then the 25, 30 mile range is not going to cut the mustard. But the two litre petrol and 13 kilowatt hour battery means that you should be getting, apparently, according to Range Rover, 88.3 miles per gallon. However, I've done some research and according to people on the Internet, some people are getting 35 miles per gallon. Some people are getting 55 miles per gallon. But I'm just going to say this, if JLR are at 88 miles per gallon and some other people on the internet are at, you know, 50 miles per gallon, anything around there, I'm, I'm quids in, I'm happy with that because right now I'm getting about 27 miles per gallon on my Cayman, completely different I know, but if you've got a 3 litre diesel one of these, it's probably going to be about, what, 27, 28, 30 if you're lucky. So if I'm getting into the 50s on a longer journey and it's electric round town for my daily commute, 
Yeah, you can start to see where the value is coming in, can't you? Now we've got the kind of interesting electric bits out of the way, what is it like to drive a little bit quicker? Well, as you can see, the air suspension is lovely, but it is a bit wobbly. Now, this car has got a performance brother, and that is called the SVR. The SVR, I think, has a, what, five litre supercharged V8, which is very nice and very shouty, but this car, getting through 0-62 in 6.3 seconds, it's not bad for a big old boat. Going through these S's, yes, doesn't like it. Like, you can just tell this car is not, not really built for speed. If I go on the brakes, ugh. The brakes feel, they feel like you are trying to stop a two, three ton truck. It is just, they, you can tell they're screaming for you to come off the brakes because it's, it is not a light thing, this car, but it, it does pick up. I can't, I must admit it does, it does well. Let's break into this corner. Come on. Yeah, a bit of power. Lovely. Right, ready? I'm going to go on the brakes mm, now. <laughs> it rocks from side to side. Oh, that's a bit worrying. There you go. It gets it. It's fine. It, it's not the best handling car, obviously, but it works really, really well. Now, you see, it is a bit wobbly, but that's not the point. As we know, this is supposed to be comfortable and relaxed. And oh my gosh, is this a comfortable car to drive? The seats are gorgeous. The air suspension is magnificent. It consumes the bumps like it's just candy floss or something. It's so lovely and smooth. Now I must admit, although there is a camera, the turning circle isn't quite as good as, you know, some other bigger cars. But if I'm honest, I'm not complaining because it's a massive car and what are you gonna expect? But I'm now gonna do a bit of a naught to 60 test to see what furniture falls over in my Range Rover. Let's go. Oh yeah, go on. Oh, yeah, that's all right. What I love, which is quite comical, the whole car just seems to lift at the front. It seems like you're just gonna take a wheelie. Yeah, that's rather good. I have lost two miles just doing that, which is not helping, but obviously, don't drive it like I just do it, and you're gonna get pretty good economy. I'm really enjoying this car. Right, now, what I like about the P400E specifically is that it's part petrol, part electric, which means it's rather quiet for people when, you know, they're driving around town doing their bits, like walking the dog or going to the pub. It's really rather, not, it's beeping, it's really rather nice. Now, little things. I mentioned that the screens get a bit smudgy with your fingertips, which is a little bit annoying. Also, listen how loud this indicator is. Maybe it's because, what, people in Range Rovers forget that they're indicating, or maybe they just don't indicate ever, but they are so loud. And it's not like it's like, I don't know, an attractive sound. It's like a, it's just, I don't know. Oh well, I'm complaining about indicators. I'm struggling to find things to complain about. It's so good. Now, before I jump out of the car, I just want to ask you a question. I want you to comment below. I've been debating whether I get something fun in the garage, a classic car, a Caterham, something cool. And I'm thinking what's going to be my daily driver. And I'm thinking I'm going to go comfortable. I've got a dog which could fit in the back. And do you think I should buy a Range Rover Sport? Comment below whether you think I should, because I must admit, I am super impressed by this car. Comfortable, economical, I think it's rather good looking. I'm impressed, really, really impressed. But you know what, let's just park up and have a quick chat before we end. <laughs> well, there we go. What do you think of this Range Rover Sport P400e? Is it now good value for money? Before I say, make sure you guys comment below and let me know what you think. But if you're like me and you're doing around 14 miles-ish on a commute, and you might do some longer journeys, but it's not always often, then yes, this provides right now good value for money. Compare the new one and 
yeah, it's easy to see why a lot of people love these cars and, and actually why I've kind of fallen for it over the last couple of hours. Now, if you're looking at an XC90 or an Audi Q7, they're just not quite at the same level. And yeah, admittedly new, they're not the same price bracket. The Range Rover is up here, the guys are down here. But now, if you're looking for a new XC90 or a Q7, I would say just have a little look. Look for a one-year-old, two-year-old one of these. I think you'd be really, really surprised at how good and how affordable they are. But yes, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Make sure to comment below what you think. Give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to see plenty of future videos to come. But for now, I'm going to jump in and go for a drive. Cheers. I've got the time.